All right, it's your boy Waffles back at it again with another video. Before I go to bed, I gotta record this real quick. Uh, so my motherboard exploded a while back, and I think a fuse blew, and I was like, "Oh, this is getting kind of sketchy. I need a, I need a new board." And it turns out I had PCIe Gen 4 SSDs, and the cheapest option for a good ATX board right now was the MSI Pro A B550. It's fine, I like it, but it took a couple hours to, cause. Like, okay, so I'm pretty fast at, like, building PCs and swapping out parts. But when you're doing a motherboard, I mean, you gotta, like, take everything out and you gotta put everything back in and you gotta, like, repaste and redo the cooler and all that. But I, um, I ended up remounting my cooler horizontally because I was being an idiot and mounted it vertically. So that's cool. Now it's, I've got a, I've got, like, better temperatures now. Plus having repasted my CPU, that was good. Um, but now my motherboard works, and what's cool about Linux is, unlike Windows where I would have done a fresh install, on Linux, the kernel loads all your stuff, so, like, it doesn't need, it doesn't need to be reinstalled, you can just load back into it, like, nothing happened, it's really cool. Uh, but today, I was going to talk a bit about the Firefox TOS, because while I don't like the TOS, and I would never use stock Firefox because of it, there's a difference, right? So the TOS actually only applies to the Firefox that you download from Mozilla's website, as in their pre-compiled binary. Now, if you are on a Linux distribution and not Windows, you may, you may notice that your distribution doesn't actually pack Mozilla's binary. They build it from source, and they distribute it that way. So if you run pretty much any Linux distro, even your stock Firefox will not have these new TOS changes. Uh, and so you would think, oh, but it's in the source code, right? You know, like, what if they compiled it with whatever the source was that was mining all your data? And actually, the source code never got any changes. So this spyware that they're running is actually, they're doing it on their service side. They're not doing it on the client side. So some distributions like Chimera OS have said that they're going to strip out whatever code causes this, but they won't find it because there is no code. And uh, yeah, so that was, that's something because Linduke made a video saying should Ubuntu ditch Firefox. And it is kind of a misunderstanding of how this TOS thing is going to work because Ubuntu will actually not be affected by it. Neither will any Linux distribution. Now, the question is, do you want to be using a browser that has such vague and basically trying to train your data on AI? You know, and that's a good question. You should still switch to a fork if you can, because these forks especially will not have Mozilla services. Now, there, there's been debate on what the good fork is to use, and personally, so I'm using Hardened Florp right now, which is basically like LibreWolf, but it's Florp, you know? And the Lunduke people have been saying that, well, LibreWolf is now politically motivated, and the argument is that if you're too politically motivated, that can cause people to become... Uh, Either it results in a loss of quality of code, or they can ship malware. Now, I'm going to be the one to say that if you are somebody that's going to ship malware and you're not a state actor, but you're doing it for political reasons, uh, there's something severely wrong with you. <laughs> because you would be sacrificing your position at open source. You would be banned from any project you touch if you decided to ship malware to the FOSS community. But also, it's a really bad place to do it because it's FOSS, you know? Like, you can't, you can't just ship malware and expect it to go undetected. And people will bring up XZ, which was a very sophisticated attack for the time. But what has happened as a result of XZ is new security software has been developed. And what this new security software can do is it can detect if a program is doing something that it's not supposed to be doing. So since XZ is a compression library, if your XZ program starts trying to do code execution, that will get flagged by, by modern security software and it will actually get quarantined because of that. And so XZ has taught us a lot about 
uh, about how to detect threats, you know, because that was something that wasn't really thought of before, was how do you detect a program doing something that the program itself isn't supposed to do, you know, and that would be how you exploit it. So now we're at the point where, yeah, if you have somebody shipping malware within their browser, you, you've got... <laughs> Uh, you've got a very malicious person on your hands and those kind of people are I don't think that's the goal you know of this political activism it really does seem more like they're trying to get rid of people in their quote community or like their developer ring that may be too politically motivated the wrong way as in not their way but what I've noticed though is um people haven't seen this movie and it's a really important movie to watch if you care about the history of Linux and it's called Revolution OS and it's got like Eric Raymond it's got Richard Stallman it's got um Linus Torvalds in it it's really cool it talks about like the history of IBM and uh, the open source definition and all that and the open source definition was originally written for Debian and inside the open source definition they said one of the rules is you will not discriminate based on political affiliation so the specific example that they used was if you made uh let's say database software and it, it was being used by abortion activists uh you know you can't uh you can't discriminate based on that same thing and they said again you couldn't do that with anti-abortion activists you would have to remain impartial now, the four freedoms you have in free and open source software are freedom to fork, freedom to collaborate, freedom to view the source code, and freedom to... I forget what the fourth one is. Anyways, the, one, of the, uh, one of the freedoms is to collaborate or not to collaborate. And what this means is if LibreWolf exists, uh, you can then fork Lieberwolf and call it fucking alt-right wolf or SS Wolfenstein or something. <laughs> SS werewolf. <laughs> and you can make yourself a little Nazi browser if you wanted to. Um, now there is actually a problem with that called hostile forking. But I think that only applies if you have branding, which is what happened with OBS and Fedora. Was Fedora was shipping a unsupported flat pack of OBS and they got argumentative and so OBS considered it a hostile fork but what they requested was they would have to remove OBS branding from their website not necessarily the package itself and so the same thing would happen with LibreWolf like uh now the cool thing about Libra branding is that you can just reuse it all you want uh at least if it's truly Libra because Firefox uses the Mozilla license and the Mozilla license is something that I've actually recommended Lewis Rossman check out because I do think he has ulterior motives and his ulterior motives were he said uh, I don't want people cloning Gray J and putting it on the Play Store but shipping it with malware or like ads or whatever and that's not a problem uh, if you use the Mozilla license, it is a problem if you use the MIT or BSD license without special clauses, I think. Uh, but in a permissive license, you can just clone new pipe and put it on the Play Store with ads or whatever you want to do. But in, uh, in the Mozilla license, you can't take Firefox, fork it, call it Firefox and have uh, the Mozilla branding on it. You would have to strip that out. And that's where things like GNU IceCat came out, where they stripped out any of Mozilla's proprietary code. Uh, even though it's still technically a FOSS license, you still retain your branding. So that way people don't get confused if you ship Firefox with a bunch of ads in it or malware or whatever else, you know? So that's something to think about uh, is if you're concerned about your your program being forked uh, you may want to use a uh, you may want to look into that license instead of the like just straight up GPL you know or straight up um, MIT BSD that kind of thing but that's really what I wanted to say was if you are using a Firefox for or sorry not only if you're using a Firefox fork but if you're using Firefox on a Linux distribution, you're probably not affected by this TOS. 
So it is kind of being overblown a bit. If you do want to check out a distribution that has a Firefox fork though, so you're really farther away from this, uh, Garuda Linux ships Fire Dragon, which is uh, like a pre-riced, I think slightly hardened, uh, Firefox fork. Uh, Kashi OS ships Kashi Browser, which has not only Gen 2 patches, but also some hardening built in. And uh, Alien OS, if you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know why I'm still using this. But um, Alien OS has hardened Flort. Uh, now it is, all their programs do default to being in German. <laughs> so if you are if you don't speak German, bear that in mind. You may need an OCR on your phone or something <laughs> to read it. But if you know, like, the word, if you know, like, a couple of words, you can navigate around menus at least. Or if you kind of know the place for things, like, Spresha means, uh, language, that kind of thing. So if you can do that, you can change the language for all these apps back to English. Uh, but that's what I wanted to say so far. That is, if you are concerned about Firefox's TOS, rest assured you probably are not affected unless you are on Windows or Mac OS. And in that case, just use a fork, because forks exist. Alright, see ya.